All right, everyone, welcome. I am Todd Bookspan with from Win by Noon. And on behalf of Dave Savage and the rest of Mortgage Coach, welcome to the Tuesday Mortgage Coach call. And today's call is really all about strategy. And I'm kind of excited to sort of uh, bring on what I'm just calling, um, I, I don't want to call them everyday uh, mortgage loan officers. I'm calling them relatable mo mortgage loan officers. These are loan officers who I think that when you hear how they're approaching the 30-10 game that Dave has talked about, right? 30 calls a day, 10 TCAs a week. And they're going to talk a little bit about what they're doing, how they're approaching their days. We're also going to take a couple of detours along the way because we've got uh, someone who's going to take us down his path and video and sort of how he's kind of built up a YouTube channel that's going viral. We're going to go down someone else's path with regards to their um, database and how they're adding value right now. And uh, so let me just, without further ado, introduce our, uh, our guest. Let me start off with Bliss Sawyer from the beautiful state of Utah. Welcome, Bliss. Thanks. Glad to be here. And I've got Emmett Dempsey from Florida. Come on, Emmett. Thanks. And last but not least, we have Katie Pastor out of Northern California. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Todd. Oh, it's my pleasure. And so, um, you know, real quick, uh, I just want to kind of run through a couple things that I was um, that I was thinking about when I was prepping for for this call. Um, and it's this idea that when I think when people are thinking about this this challenge, it seems a little bit overwhelming. Um, I don't know about you, but it, it seems overwhelming to me. Um, to think about this idea of, um, of making 30 phone calls a day. And so what I decided to do was sort of throw together just a quick idea of what type of loan officer are you? Because this is really what it boils down to is, is you don't have to be superhuman in order to actually do well, uh, you know, do well with this philosophy. But I think here's what happens. Most of us get up and it's another day, another day with the same results, right? Um, it's this whole idea of the definition of insanity, right? And so what I, what I want you guys to remember is this, this statistic, and hopefully you guys can see my screen. Um, it says 94% no plan. And so um, that's a statistic that I learned. It's either a Todd Duncan statistic or a Stratmore Group statistic. I heard it at Sales Mastery a couple of years ago, and it's that 94% of loan officers wake up with no plan. And so I think that's this whole idea of um, another day, same results, no plan, and therefore 91% have inconsistent month over month results. Um, the other group, um, whoops, man, I got way ahead of myself in my fancy slides here. Hang on, let me go backwards. Um, this is what happens when you put together a, a thing. Um, other group wakes up with great intentions, but I think gets distracted by shiny objects, excuses, no plan. Um, and that's why I brought these guys on to talk about how are they actually making 30 plus phone calls in a day and, and how are they getting that done? And then lastly, I think there's this group that wins by noon. They're the ones who actually make a plan, stick to it, don't get distracted, focus on their daily disciplines, focus on their target day, commitments, right? Say, yes, I'm doing these 30 calls. Um, the weird part about it is, and I can't wait for you guys to tell me about it, but I think if you make 30 calls a day, I think 10 TCAs is kind of a, that's kind of easy. I, my, my belief in what I'm seeing is that about, about 30 calls a day is probably going to result in potentially five TCAs a day. So it's probably a lot more per week. Um, and so, you know, again, that's this whole thing of, of uh, winning by noon. So um, that was really, you know, I kind of thought I didn't want to really get too, uh, too off in the weeds, but I kind of wanted to walk through you guys making a decision each day about what, what's going to be important to you. And so I want to bring on Bliss and um, sort of talk Bliss. You know, I, um, I've known you, I think, for the longest of the group, and you seem to be um, always willing to jump in on anything that Dave throws out here to the mortgage coach community. <laughs> you know, challenge, whether it's I like your own a challenge. Own. And, um, and so kind of give me, give me your opinion on this contest, why you jumped in, you know, sort of where you see yourself on my, what type of loan officer are you scale and, uh, and take it away. Okay. So yeah, I love a challenge because I think you can do, you can stretch yourself beyond what you think you can do for, for a short amount of time. And I like that because you know, there's an end, right? So for the month of April, for those of you that aren't really familiar with this, Dave challenged um, loan officers to make 30 calls a day. And I consider that to be outbound unsolicited calls. I know there's lots of questions about what does that mean? So if someone leaves me a message, me calling them back, I don't count that. Um, following up with past prospects, following up um, with real estate agents, um, and, and honestly, what I do is if, if I, um, if it goes to voicemail, I actually hang up and immediately send them a text with whatever that message would be. So I know people are kind of questioning, how does that look and all the details? Don't sweat all the little stuff. Just do what works for you. Um, you know, and it's actually made me start to get really creative. So my assistant and I, you know, work kind of guys like, 
what else can I call? You know, that's one big thing is, are you going to run out of people to call? And I had taught actually a, a win by noon class to real estate agents about 10 days before. So she's like, Hey, reach out to everybody that came to the class and just say, Hey, how's your first 10 days been with the planner? You know? And so that kind of got some dialogue going. And so I think by having a challenge like this, then it causes you to think a little bit deeper about how you can meet those goals, right? And get a little bit creative. So whether you take on this 30-10 challenge, or maybe you have a challenge with the other loan officers in your company, or an accountability partner or a coach, right? Just choose something that pushes you. Um, so is that kind of what you were looking for, Todd? Yeah, and so when you're making your 30 dials, are you doing that, like blocking off time in the morning? What does that look like for you? So it depends on the day. And if I have what else I have going on, I try to do it in the morning because that's personally my high energy time. But honestly, I've been pretty pumped about this challenge that, you know, I don't mind doing it in the afternoon, right? I'm just always looking for opportunities. I've got a thing, um, a meeting up in, in Salt Lake City at noon today. So I, the person I'm going with, he's driving and I'm, I've got a call list. So while I'm driving up there, I'm going to be making calls out to this call list. Um, so yeah, it's ideally it's great to do by noon, but realistically, you've got to block out some time in the afternoon, probably a few days of the week. Um, yeah. And what have you got any end of any day and been short on your calls and then had to block extra time or have you let it roll to the next day? What does that look like? Well, um, you know, today is a hard day because I've got kind of some back to back stuff all day long. And so I don't know that I'll get it. So yesterday I actually tried to just kind of exceed. Um, and then in looking at, um, Wednesday, so looking at tomorrow, I'm kind of blocking out a couple of jam sessions for some phone calls. Um, and then also on the, the 10 TCA part of this 10 total cost analysis a week. Um, one thing that I am doing to really kind of bulk that up. And I've actually had the idea for a long time. I just never implemented it. So I'm going back to my recently closed clients and um, the first column I'm doing the, the loan they closed at the 30 year fixed mortgage. And then I'm doing a 25 year 2015. So there's four options. First one being the current mortgage. And then if they want to pay extra on their mortgage, showing them what that looks like. So then I email that to them with a super short little video and then um, I call or text them say, Hey, watch for this email. Just want to give you some additional numbers. Now that you're in your house, you know what it looks like if you pay extra principal. So not only am I doing a TCA, but I'm also doing a phone call um, or a text on that. So again, I had that idea a long time ago, but I've never implemented it. This challenge made me say, all right, how difficult can it be? And it's really not that difficult to do. So that's the other thing we're doing to kind of trying to get some extra TCAs out to people. And in those, we also ask for referrals. Um, so I really do try to help use that to help grow my business. I love that idea because I think, we, I think really it's not natural for most of us ask to ask for referrals, but if you think about it, you can just kind of slide it in there in that video after you've added value to somebody. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. So if you're making 30 dials, how many people do you think you're actually talking to? Um, I kind of hope I get voicemail sometimes because calls can take a lot of time, right? So I don't track how many are voicemail versus calls. I would probably say maybe 50%. Um, yeah, probably, probably about 50%. I did have one of the loan officers in my company chat with me yesterday. He was asking about the 3010 challenge and, uh, and he says, well, do you count calls if it's a loan in process? and you need to call them um, and ask them for a bank statement. And I said, the, personally, the only time I allow myself to count that as a call is if I ask for a refer referral in the conversation, because otherwise I don't feel it's a business building call. Um, if I'm just calling to ask them for, you know, a bank statement or an additional pay stub, right? And so I'm kind of setting my own parameters for this to grow my business, not just to make phone calls. This isn't just about, you know, marking off on a piece of paper that I've picked up the phone. It's about growing my business. So that's how I do it. So if you guys are watching on um, Zoom or Facebook, right, we're, we're trying to push the comments currently into the Facebook Live. 
Um, I did ask you guys who was there and where you're from, and so far none of you answered, so that's super embarrassing. So if you're there, if you could at least maybe give a thumbs up or something to us, we would, uh, we would love that. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, for me, the, the goal always is how long does something take? Um, what are the results? And, and I, you know, I'm a nerd when it comes to that in watching it. So I've been, um, I've been coaching my brother-in-law who's brand new to the business and never done a loan in life. And he's call, calling our old database, right? I mean, for two and a half years that I stopped doing loans, it's just been sitting there stagnant. And what I'm, what I'm seeing is it's about um, 10 calls um, 10 dials an hour is what is kind of what I'm seeing anywhere from eight to 10 and normally rough conversations. You also mentioned bliss that you're texting everyone. What are you getting more response back to text now that you're setting, you're doing that set of voicemail? It really depends. Um, you know, real estate agents kind of ignore me, <laughs> you know, once in a while I'll give, yeah, great to hear from you. If I'm telling them about a class I'm going to teach, um, they'll respond if I'm following up about a past referral or that type of a thing. Um, re, uh, prospects that I follow up with and then, and then text, they seem to be pretty good about responding, right? You know, so it just really depends. But, you know, Todd, you and I earlier were talking about mindset, right? I don't care if they respond or not. I really don't. Um, you have to completely take that off the table, right? We're not doing this to get a warm fuzzy. We're not doing this to get, you know, that dopamine rush. We're doing this to build our business. So it's okay if they don't respond, they're still seeing it. They're still hearing from you. And in the end, it's a numbers game. And the more you do it, the more you're going to get future referrals and turn past referrals into closed loans. Yeah. I love that you say it's a mindset. Um, I did a call, I think back in January with Josh Metal, where we talked about mindset and sort of how he approaches his day and how he's trying to have fun this year. And I think that's important for all of us to remember because ultimately the, what this 30, 10 game, and I think you guys have all figured out if you're, if you're new to it, right? 30 calls a day, 10 TCAs a week. Um, it's a mindset, right? It's, it's why I showed those slides at the beginning. Maybe I probably didn't do as good of a narration because I was trying to hurry through them as I realized I'd rather talk to these guys than show you guys a slideshow. Um, but it's a mindset of having a plan for the day. And I think when you have this commitment that I'm going to make these calls, then, you know, people tend to do it. And you mentioned accountability too, Bliss. And I know you've got an accountability partner that you picked up through this in some other state that you didn't know beforehand. Yeah, so, so Jacqueline out of California, she had put on the post that Dave did. She's like, hey, anybody want to be accountable? So we just send each other a little Facebook messenger, um, you know, kind of with our numbers. And just, just knowing you're going to be sharing that with someone, um, I think makes you be a little bit more conscious of your activities during the day and saying, you know what, I've got time to make a couple more calls. You know, like I said, afternoons are not my high energy time. And so a lot of times I would just, kind of piddle around in the afternoon and not be very productive. And I'm finding myself being so much more focused. Um, I'm looking at the numbers. I'm saying, okay, yeah, you know what? I got 30, but I think I can get another 10 calls in before my next whatever that might look like. Um, and so it's a game and I'm kind of competitive. And I, I think most loan officers by nature are entrepreneurs and competitive. I'm competitive with myself, right? Um, and so that's why I love the tracking when I first started using your planner, Todd, I actually didn't track the numbers weekly and monthly. It was just a little bit overwhelming for me at first. Um, and I've been using it for almost a year and a half now. I really wish I could go back. I've been doing it great since January. Um, but I, I wish I could go back and compare it to the first quarter of last year because I feel like I have been so much more disciplined and in the habit of tracking and making the calls even when I don't feel like it. And that goes back to that mindset, right? Are you doing things even when you don't feel like it and picking up that phone, right? And being proactive in creating, um, uh, creating lists of who you will call, right? I know some people are, are making birthday calls. Every month I call, so in April, I call all the people for the last four years that have closed in the month of April. And I just pick up the phone and say, hey, happy anniversary on your mortgage. How's it going? Do you have any questions? Um, you know, and so finding ways to do that and being super focused, even when you don't feel like it. That's, the, that's been the advantage to me, I guess. Yeah, you know, I always say that we got in this business so we could set our own schedule and that's <laughs> the exact reason we fail, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. We don't really have this calendar. And so when you have things like this challenge, when you have things yeah. like, hey, I'm going to make 
birthday calls. I think you have this unique, unique commitment. And, and we talked about it. Obviously, I'm all about win by noon, but it doesn't matter what tool you use to track it. It just really matters that you track it because you kind of heard Bliss say it. She wishes she could look back and compare it to a year before because, yeah. again, it's that whole idea of the mystery in it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I got a deal. Well, what did I do to get the deal? And, and I always feel like there's, there's no there's no mystery in the numbers. The numbers tell the truth and the numbers predict the changes in the market. The numbers predict the changes in your, um, in your own clientele and your own database. So I think that's kind of fun. Well, it's so funny. So way, way back in 1995, one of my first years of originating, my manager said, I need you to set a goal for the year of your production. I'm like, well, I don't understand. I'm just going to do what I can do. Right. Um, and so I've come a long ways from then. I, from then, right, I see a ton of value with setting goals, but that big goal, it's really hard to, to just have one big goal because what are you going to do to get there? And so I'm glad you kind of brought up, it doesn't really matter what system you use. So I have my win by noon planner here. So this, this was yesterday. Um, but honestly, and this is what I tell, you know, when I have real estate agents kind of ask me, you know, what I'm doing, you know, I talk about the win by noon, but in all truth, it doesn't matter what system you use as long as you use a system. And so what, what I'm telling the real estate agents that I'm, I'm teaching the win by noon is I'm like, you know what, let's do it for a quarter, right? Let's get you in some habits. And then, you know, maybe you'll go in a different direction, but you'll understand the value of tracking all of these activities and having it in front of you every single day. And so that's what, you know, and I know Todd, you're, you're so awesome. You don't like to just preach win by noon, but honestly, it's made a huge difference. It's made a huge difference. And I'm a pretty disciplined person to begin with, but I have found um, it's increasing all of my numbers, my number of referrals, the number of different real estate agents that are giving me business and um, which in turn, you know, fuels the applications and fuels the credit, fuels the credit approvals and the closed loans. And so I'm just a big proponent. Before I used Win by Noon, I used oh, like this, right? Just a notepad. And I had my little system for every day. And I would make 10 boxes um, in the bottom right corner. And then my goal was to make 10 outbound unsolicited phone calls a day. And I did that for years. Um, and that worked for me. It wasn't a bad system. Well, I just kind of took that system and put it on crack, right? With, with what I do now. And it's made it easier for me to also define more what I need my team to do because I used to just hover and I used to have a hard time not taking, how do I say that? It's, when you get to the point where, where you grow your business and you have an assistant or a loan partner, sometimes it's really hard to let go. And I had a really hard time with that. That's becoming easier because I know the highest and best use of my time is doing the things on this page. So, yeah. All right. So what kind of encouragement would you have for somebody who's listening and still not sold that they can jump in and do 30 calls today? Um, what, what would you, how would you encourage them along? So I would just pick a number, right? So if you're, if you're honestly making five calls a day and that's all you've been doing, just double that. I'm going to make 10 outbound unsolicited phone calls a day. 10, that's all, right? That's pushing you because you're right. If, if you're making five calls a day and all of a sudden I want you to make 30, well, after the first day, you're going to be like, well, I called everybody I know. What, that, I don't even like this. This isn't even any fun. And so first you have to plan. You have to figure out who you're going to call and why you're going to call them. But it's okay not to do 30, but whatever you're going to do, just make it stretch you and then put it out there. Make it, make yourself accountable to your team, your manager, other loan officers. When Dave first um, kind of launched this, I don't even know where he was, but he was in an office with a couple loan officers and they were like having, maybe you remember it better than I do, Todd, but they kind of had a challenge of phone calls and stuff. That's how this evolved, right? Right. Oh yeah. yeah. And there's great prizes too, by the way, for those of you who are driven by, monetary excitement, right? Uh, Wally, uh, Elbieri's a thousand bucks. Uh, Dave, a day with Dave, a coaching hour with Dave, coaching hour with Jen Duplicis, uh, wine country for a day and night. Win by Jen. noon for a year. Win right? by noon for a year. And then, uh, yeah, day at the a day and night, of maybe even a weekend with uh, Michelle Town. Um, so there's some cool prizes here. Like I almost thought- Is I this a winner take all contest? 
Um, you know what? I don't have the rules, Emmett, but I know you're like trying to win. So, um, so that's good. That's, that's the best part about it. We have a, comp a competitive group here. So do. Um, I don't know that anyone needed a prize for it. So, you know, it's good to have people on here who are all going to challenge each other too. So this will kind of get some little fire up here, but amongst this group for sure. But you know what? It's already the middle of April, right? So maybe you haven't started yet. So come up with something that you're going to do with some people around you. Or maybe, here's an idea. Maybe you um, call up a couple of real estate agents and say, hey, you know what? I have an idea. Let's do a challenge together um, for the next two weeks of April. Let's, what, do you, what do you think of us making you know, 25 calls a day and do it with some real estate agents? Any of you that have ever gone through or had agents go through the BOLD program, it's kind of similar to that, right? They're just really high numbers for a short amount of time. That might be kind of a cool thing to do with some of your referral partners. Well, I'm bold. Um, it's 100 contacts a week is what they get forced to do. So they're having to make a lot of dials till they actually get 100 people on the telephone. Slightly different than um, if someone just hangs up on them, then they don't, then that's okay too. As long as they get out like, hey, it's me, I'm the realtor, click. You know, they actually count that as a contact, which the rest of us might not. But nonetheless, it forces them to do it. And they even have a competition and a pin if you do it all in one day. So a lot of people who will do that as well, and they'll spend the full day doing it. So that's just a, a different level. It's a commitment, right? My two big words of 2019 are decision and commitment, right? You've got to decide. You have to make that decision. You have to be committed to whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, and so I love it, Bliss. I mean, I see that you're doing that. I see that you're helping out Jacqueline in Northern California by being her accountability partner. I see that you're leading that in your office as well. That's cool. So, all right. So let's, um, well, the last things you say, before you jump off, I know you've got to go and then we'll bring in um, Emmett and we'll bring in uh, Katie to, to chat it up as well. Um, any other things you want to add before I boot you off? No, I just think get excited about it. You know, get excited because closings, you know, you have that huge funnel, right? And the closing is just this narrow thing down at the bottom and you've got to talk to so many people to go inside that funnel. So get excited about that part where so many of us, we tend to dread it. We tend to feel discouraged by it because we hear no so many times, but guess what? It's that big, right? You've got to hear no a whole bunch of times before you get down to where it's narrow and a closing comes out the end. And so if you can be more analytical towards it instead of emotional and statistical about it, of I don't know. I just like checking off boxes, right? That just does something for me, right? Um, and I might talk to 30 people today and not one of them gives me a referral. Not one of them wants to do a loan with me. But if I do that every single day, it's that compound effect, right? If I do that every single day, all of a sudden it's be like, wow, that loan just fell into my lap. How did that happen? Right? And that's the coolest feeling ever. So yeah, that's what I say. Don't, don't get discouraged that, that it takes a lot of calls to get one closing. It's just part of your job. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that I have a, a private Facebook group with some realtors in it and I hold them accountable. I also have a loan officer version of it as well, where they turn in their numbers every week. And um, when someone posted their numbers on Monday, she said that my lack of focus in January is showing up in my closings now and that her focus now is so that she can actually close out the quarter strong and you just hit the nail on the head. What you do today is going to impact you later, right? That funnel is big and it's, it is a little bit of an oxymoron, right? We're running a contest to get you guys who are commissioned salespeople to actually do your job so you can get a paycheck. Um, so it's a little bit of an oxymoron and, and ironic that we have, but that's, you can get more paycheck and you can hang out and win some pretty cool prizes. I think that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks so much for having me on. Sorry I have to run, but I'm going to listen to the rest of it um, recorded after you guys are done. Um, Hey, real quick, Bliss, someone's asking yeah. about you tracking using Win by Noon. Mm -hmm. um, can you share what you're doing? Uh, like show the picture of it? Yeah, she just said, you, yeah, can you show the tracking? Yeah, so this is yesterday. So this is one day. Um, I personally don't check the difference between whether it's a leader. I just do leads um, and prospect calls and client calls and then um, realtor calls. Um, and then I track my quality conversations. So if I actually get them on the phone and we talk about something, I write that their name down under quality conversations because I want to have um, quite a few of those a day. I don't want to, you know, just text or just leave a message. And then I try to have um, six to eight live meetings a week between client appointments, realtor appointments, or events that I go to. Um, and then I track my leads here. And then down at the bottom is where you kind of just do your summary. So that's kind of in a nutshell what 
a day in my life looks like. Um, is that kind of what you were thinking she was asking about, Todd? That answered it, and if it didn't, Christina, let me know. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that Dave's been encouraging everyone to do who's on here is to post a picture of how you're tracking. So whether you're using Bliss's old yellow pad system and you're just tracking on a yellow pad, whether you're using Wind by Noon or some other system out there, you know, post it up in the group because I think that's what will encourage others to do it. Um, and you'll notice that strategically, um, Dave and I picked a few people who've been posting their pictures in the group that are on this call um, and so Deborah's asking, are you using the win by noon planner? Yes, is the answer. Correct, Bliss? Yeah, so I've been using it for probably about a year and a half now. Um, and it, it took a while to get in the habit and, and, and to make it kind of fit the flow of my day. But honestly, I absolutely love it. And I'm not saying that for Todd's benefit. I'm, it's the truth. It's the truth. And I teach it to realtors now. Full disclosure, Bliss called me a jerk when I, when I came out with the real estate agent version of it. So, um, because then she had to start using it for herself so she could teach it to her real estate agent. So she didn't, uh, she didn't go like give up her pad of paper that she loved so much, uh, very, uh, easily without. But here's, but here's the cool thing is that real estate agents really, really respect you if they know how hard you work on your business. And so I'm finding that in probably the last three months, I've had more real estate agents call me and say, hey, you know what? Wondering if we could get together and chat. I, I like what I see in social media. I think we'd work well together. Now, I don't know if any of them produce very much. We have a lot of agents that don't produce anything, but I've never really gotten calls like that before. And honestly, I think it's a combination of social media, classes I'm teaching, um, and then the disciplines of what I'm doing. And so, yeah, it's really worked for me. Awesome. And so those of you just joining us, that is Bliss Sawyer. She's got to run up to Salt Lake. So she is going to jump off. I've got um, Emmett Dempsey I'm going to bring on in just about 10 seconds so that he can start uh, talking to us about what he's got going on. We also, got, we also have Katie Pastor in the wings. Um, and so we're really talking today with loan officers who are participating in Dave Savage's 3010 Challenge and – um, really how they're approaching their day, how they're getting through it. And then I'm also going to have Emmett weave in what he's doing on video because he recently talked about how he's now got up to a thousand plus views on his social media. And then he can also talk about, well, who the heck am I calling and how she's adding value to her. How's it going? So, um, so come on in, Emmett. That's Sue Sparks. Hey, guys. How you doing? We're doing good. Hang on. we got to get Bliss off the call here. Let me see her real quick. Okay. All right, you just start talking. There we go. She's gone. All right, Emmett, okay. so introduce yourself real quick because, um, you know, you're one of the people, Bliss has been on here before, but I think this is the first time that we've had you highlighted on any of the Mortgage Coach calls, so super excited to have you here. Very, very, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, hey, Mortgage Coach community, I'm Emmett Dempsey here in uh, Port St. Lucie, Florida. That's where the Mets have spring training. Uh, been in mortgage origination since 2007. I uh, started with Countrywide and various brokers, correspondents later. Currently with Geneva Financial for a little bit better part of three years. Uh, former Army officer. Uh, husband, father, four kids, and uh, living in Florida. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, love that. And I got the pleasure to meet you in person at uh, Agent 2021. Mm -hmm. And so real quick, let's just start off with the 3010 challenge. I mean, obviously you jumped right in. You know, what, what's what been your mindset? How are you scheduling your day? Are you doing those calls first thing later in the day? What Kind of give us what your day looks well, like. Well, you know, I'm also a, a win by noon, uh, you know, alkalite. Uh, I, I really love, love this planner. It, it helps keep you focused. I love theme days. And you can talk more about that because it helps keep you focused on good days and bad. Um, you know, some days are, are uh, some days are better than others. You know, so today's Tuesday. It's my realtor update day. And uh, going back to some of the other things that Bliss had said, um, just uh, making my calls. And a lot of the realtors say, "Okay, great. You know, um, loans moving along." But uh, you know, one of them said, "Hey, I loved your last video." You know, I, I, I did one on, on Pop Stroke, which is the latest, uh, you know, a golfing entertainment center that came, came to town. And like, I knew it was, it, it just hit, just had the grand opening. So I figured I'd do a video on it and I've been getting a lot of comments on it. So, and as part of your calls and say, Hey, you know, and then part of that, and a lot of those realtors, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been calling every Monday to get meetings with. And then as part of the updates I had me in contract with now they're willing, willing to talk. So it's just, um, you know, so it, uh, keeping focus and, and staying on, on track helped me get that conversation. Well, and I, and I do love that. So for you, one of the things that you uh, shared transparently is that one of your days blew up. You had a picture of a dumpster on fire, which I love because I think that's the beauty of this community. And I think that, yes. you know, when you guys all share transparently, I think that is, that is huge. So tell me what happened that day versus the other days where you crushed it with 30 plus calls. 
Well, I mean, uh, that day I had a loan, uh, a loan you expected to close, die with, uh, unexpectedly uh, for a guideline for a short sale they forgot to tell you about. Um, but, you know, uh, the silver lining is they will be a loan in 2021. It's just they have to wait. The, 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 that's all it's just and, and thankfully it was an awesome I felt bad for the borrower she's really excited to, uh, to buy it's just uh, she had has a wait time and uh, it's she's in the middle of a, you know, a BK I can't do non-QM so I tried to go other directions and I just it was shut down so I had to issue a denial and that lead I referred to a realtor you know, you know had, had, had built relationships I do a lot of lead generation on my own and I was excited to, to re refer out to realtors they really like that um, so it was just, uh, you know, building that relationship. And then I had, you know, uh, we have a stomach bug going around our house. And then my, one of my twins was sick, you know, one of my other twins was sick last night. So, uh, so I've been up, you know, for a better part of the night. So it's just, you know, life happens. I mean, but you know, how you get back on track is having a theme day and, and knowing that uh, you have something to do. You know, because even on that Thursday, a lot got done. I, I edited my video because I shot on Wednesday because part of my, my, my uh, afternoon time is filming on Wednesday. There's a edit, fr Friday I post. You know, so it's just having a structure uh, helps you get back on track on good days and bad. So well, um, I think that's really critical, right? So again, it doesn't matter what your structure is, right? So what, um, what Emmett was referring to is I call it the ideal week, right? What are you going to do? And, and day in and day out, your ideal week is you're calling leads that haven't converted, right? I think where a challenge is most loan officers forget is that it typically takes a minimum of six calls to convert a lead. And so if you're only calling once or twice, if you don't have time blocked in a system to actually follow up with them, then that's where stuff slips through the cracks. And then you also have people who have applied and magically have not given you the documentation. You need to chase it down to get them pre-approved. I mean, that happens every day for the best loan officers. Um, and then the other thing is, is how do you then structure the rest of your week and, and put in these things that I mentioned on Tuesdays, he's calling his pre-approved buyers, right? And so, um, so that's one of the things that I teach in Win by Noon. I'm not going to go off on a tangent on there, but anyone was interested, just ping me. I'm happy to share you. Uh, what that looks like and send you some videos that'll, that'll get you over um, to that. But ultimately it's a structure, right? I said earlier that we get into this business um, to set our own hours and then we just ping pong around like a, like a pinball in a, in a pinball machine. And we don't actually always get what we need to get done unless you say, Hey, this is actually what I have to do today. This is what my job is. Um, regardless of what day of the week it is that that seems right. Right. I mean, Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, one, one of my personal things, I'm a voracious content consumer. I love podcasts. You know, I try to listen to a lot of different uh, talks about it, coaching calls. I'm a big fan of Moore's Marketing Animals, several other coaching programs, but a lot of their common themes are the only thing you have control of is your activity because closings and, and fundings, you know, just, just like you saw, I had a funding that was supposed to fund and didn't, but all you can control is your daily activity. All I can control is how many people I contact. You're not closing enough loans, contact more people. It's really that simple. And we want to try and reinvent, reinvent the wheel. There's really no, no other way to do it. It's just you so what, talk about the, what about the person who says, I don't have more people to contact, right? I mean, that seems to be the other thing as well. I don't know who to call. I mean, I, I think it was Jeremy Forsey. He says, it, you know, it's raining loans out there. Yeah, I mean, just go, go talk to somebody. I mean, find realtors. I mean, it's 2019. So I mean, search on Google for, for real estate agents and, and pick up the phone or financial planners. I mean, there's plenty of content to consume on this channel and, and YouTube to figure out who to call and, and whatever suits you. So there's a whole bunch of realtors out there <laughs> to contact or, or go to a real, real estate association, start meeting them that way. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of folks to call. I mean, heck, you, you can buy leads. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways to do this business, but you gotta, you gotta find what works for you. For me, I, I like, I like uh, technology. I've done a lot of own, only generation on Google and Facebook. Um, a lot of how I contact folks is via text because that's how they respond nowadays. I think, I don't know what, the, what the, the numbers are, but I think it's, it's staggering how many people don't answer their phone. Um, you know, just, just the, I know personally, I, a lot of my phone calls, I, I, I don't know numbers. I don't answer them. They're either a, somebody trying to sell me something or a recruiter. So, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other you know, your prospects have that, 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 that same reservation. Yeah, so it's just... The, the, st the statistics are, I, I recently saw someone uh, talk about it that in the, I'm assuming it's the same United States, in the UK, it's like the fifth or sixth most used app on your actual smartphone device is the actual phone itself. So I'm thinking, you know, Instagram, Facebook, text message, you know, those kinds of things come ahead of it. Um, average text is responded to um, in less than a minute. And uh, 
and gets, you know, 45% get a response, which is always weird to me, but I think that's just because at some point someone's going to laugh so they don't respond. Mm -hmm. And then the other odd one is that the average adult spends 23 hours a month texting right now. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, but you just said it. So, I mean, again, I'm a big proponent of picking up the phone first and I love what blue texting afterwards. So you just have to think through what that, you know, what that, what that means to you. Um, you know, real quick, can you just touch before I bring Katie on to talk about how she's dialing her database followers and adding value? Can you just real quick touch on the video stuff? Cause you said you just talked about something that wasn't mortgage or real estate related. You talked about a new business that opened up in town um, can you just give just a couple minutes on what that looks like? Sure. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, it goes back to Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, he basically says, be the, be the digital mayor. And I think we've talked a lot about that in the last couple of calls, but, uh, and then also about, uh, uh, picking one, one platform that, that you start with. And for me, I, I, I pick YouTube because I think it's the second biggest search engine. It's owned by Google. And if you learn how to do YouTube, you do it right. So I search on YouTube for people about how to do YouTube. So there's some thought leaders I, I watch how they how they do it, how they script videos, um, how they upload, and, and how to, how to properly tag them so that they're, 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 they're findable. Um, so I, I learned how to how to do it, do it do it right. I decided to do it every week. You know, a lot of, I like being able to send clients there as a content bank of frequently asked questions, and and it lends credibility. I mean, so many times um, I, you don't meet your clients face to face right away. And then I, I send them here, they watch videos, and a lot of, of my uh, recent reviews have said, I loved his videos. And then when they meet me in person, they're like, hey, you look just like your videos. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's just a YouTube video. <laughs> like, it's almost like, feels like it's a celebrity factor. Like, no, I'm just trying to help you out and trying to answer some questions in a format that you will consume, not, the, that, not according to me, it's according to the client. So it's just having, you know, client focused, frequently asked questions, 24 hours a day, 365. And then not, not just boring mortgage topics. I mean, because there's only so much content you can do and also have a section for community involvement because, you know, ultimately, why buy a house in your town? Is your town good? Why would you want to buy here? So uh, for me, you know, Port St. Lucie is the home of the Mets. So I, I did a, a 10 reasons why and I, I um, posted that, you know, and uh, it's had over a thousand views in about a month. So, and I've gotten phone calls and I've, I've got potential loans you know, as far out, you know, in Vegas and, and Iowa say, Hey, I'm graduating. I'm moving to Port St. Lucie and I want you to do my loan. Okay, great. So, I mean, it's not like a, it's a whole bunch of them, but it's, it's nice that that content's being, being watched. And then I, I'll repurpose that on, onto Facebook. So I don't just ignore Facebook. I just start with YouTube and upload it to Facebook, just have, having a plan. And then I'll, I'll rip the audio from that, that YouTube on, onto, uh, uh, into a podcast and then they can listen to the audio. So being available and then also write a blog post on my website, just being multi-channel approach. So where your content's out there and just, again, going back to Gary Vaynerchuk and then uh, the anchor.fm app I learned from him is just how to upload your audio. It gets to all the podcast platforms. So I technically have a podcast. It's just the, the rips of my, my YouTube videos, but people, people listen to it and I've gotten calls from that too. So it's just being everywhere. And I you know, said, Hey, I see you guys everywhere. So it's just that in 2019, you have to learn how to be digitally everywhere. So my tie into the competition is, is you're making 30 calls a day. You're focused on 10 TCAs a week and you've scheduled time to do this one video that you're pushing out in these different platforms during the week. Is that, is that something where you, you record that on the same day each week and you, you've got it all laid out or how does that fit into your schedule with all these calls you're doing? Well, I, I try and uh, Wednesday afternoons is my filming filming days, and I, I had a suggestion, you know, uh, from our, our chief marketing officer James Paul Minori, basically, you know, bring a couple of shirts to work, so you, you can record multiple videos. And I know uh, uh, Kelly Zitlow has mentioned that she does that too, like she just records, just blast records a, a bunch of videos. But before I even start filming, you know, I, I use a program called Morning Fame to to actually tag them, so when I do a video, it's going to get found on YouTube. Um, so I, I do that before I even start filming. So I know the, the, the topics first I see, make sure I'll be able to rank for them. So there, there's a process that I've learned how to, if you're going to do YouTube, learn how to do YouTube. Um, so to make a video that people will search for that ultimately get, get watches and traction. I love it. I'm answering someone's question. Again, they're asking about the 30, the 10 part of the 30, 10 competition. So those of you just join us, I, we brought on Bliss, who already left. We've got Emmett, and then we've got Katie, who's going to come on momentarily. Um, and hopefully, Emmett, you can hang out and answer some questions from the crowd and add some more commentary. Uh, but really was trying to focus on some people that are doing uh, the, the challenge that Mortgage Coach and Dave Savage threw out there, the 30-10 game. And it's 30 calls a day, 10 TCA, mm -hmm. which I think is just super easy, right? It's a total cost analysis. If, you've, if you're talking to 30 people, 
Emma just said it, it's raining loans right now. So it should be pretty easy then to be able to dial up 10, mm. you know, 10 PCAs. Cause I'm seeing it with people that are brand new to the business, just dialing a database of people who have mortgages, who don't even know them um, and just have a good script and are actually following up. So, all right. Any last words, Emma, before I bring in Katie? No, and, and just to answer how, how am I doing it? I use uh, good systems, uh, phone burner. You know, it's, it's things that we've discussed here. It integrates to my CRM be on touch. It's just using those systems. You know, they'll, they'll leave a voicemail and just helps you get through your calls much faster, much more efficient. So you say got to be efficient use of your time. Awesome. So, all right. So Emmett's going to hang out here. So if you guys have questions, push them out in the Facebook live. I've also uh, got some of you questions and chat too um, in the app here. So, um, so we will, uh, I'll keep monitoring both of those, but I'm, I'm primarily looking down here at Facebook live when you wonder what I'm doing down there, but uh, let's bring on Katie Pastor. Katie, how the heck are you? Oops, you're on mute. Hang on one sec. Unmute yourself. Wait, you've been so patiently. You saw me talking, but couldn't hear the words, right? Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> Look how exciting your office looks, too. It looks amazing. Oh, well, thank you. I've got a lot of words going on. And I, I guess, actually, one of the signs that's interesting, it's right over my shoulder. Um, and it kind of ties into everything that we're talking about. But I love the sign that says, you are entirely up to you. So, um, and this, you know, is going to bring up when by noon unintentionally, but truly we are, as mortgage planners, we are, our day is up to us and how we um, work our day is truly going to be the results of our success. So, um, yeah, it's just interesting that that's over my shoulder and I'm looking at my when by noon planner and it all just ties together that we are truly, our activities and our actions are, are completely up to us. So um, I want to talk a little bit about um, my approach going into this year. And it ties in certainly with the challenge, the 3010 challenge. And like anybody, I'm um, competitive and I love a good challenge. So when I saw this out there, I thought, okay, well, I better pick up my game. And again, it just ties into um, my goals for this year. And looking at this year, um, I thought to myself, you know, a, a good mortgage planner to a realtor can close a transaction on time. They can take great care of their clients. Um, but there's so much more to being a good mortgage planner, a loan officer. And I gave that some thought about, you know, I have this database. I have a database of over, you know, 500 people right now. How am I adding value to those people? Those people who have chosen to work with me in the very beginning and we did that transaction. How can I continue to pour into them? And that's been my focus for this year. And I know that when I pour into my existing database, I'm, that's gonna pay off, right? It's gonna pay off with referrals, it's gonna pay off with happy realtor partners, it's also gonna be, be um, it's gonna pay off with my existing clients, again, who have chosen to, to, to work with me, they're gonna find value in that. So um, my, my goal is to contact my existing database, so the people that have worked with me, and I'm thinking of strategies of how am I gonna add value to them? And one of those approaches that I'm taking is how do they pay off their mortgage sooner, okay? Because we, again, are helping them facilitate this purchase and get into this home, but we know everybody wants to pay off that mortgage as quickly as possible. So I've made it a habit of <clears throat> following up with my database and implementing the idea of setting up a biweekly mortgage payment. And when I introduce that idea, and you know, there's a way of, of selling that idea, um, when I introduce that idea, they get very excited because I'm telling them that they're, they're gonna shave six or seven years off of the end of their term. So, um, these contacts that I'm making are people who have chosen to work with me. I'm adding value by showing them how they can pay off their mortgage sooner. And I'm also following up with a um, revised amortization schedule so that they can actually see when we set up this bi-weekly what it truly is doing at the end of their term. So I'm integrating the mortgage coach by setting out that amortization schedule. Um, and then again, I'm, I'm just reaching out adding value to, to my clients. Um, I was on a call, I, I heard a call, I think a few weeks ago, I can't remember when it was or who it was, but they were talking about reaching out to your database and just making contact. 
I like that approach. It's just a little bit different for me because again, I'm all about adding value and I certainly don't want to waste somebody's time on the phone. So every contact that I'm making, I'm thinking, you know, how am I adding value? All right. So two questions for yeah. what percentage of your 30 calls a day are to past clients? Yeah, I would say a good 80% um, is to my existing database. And I'm even going back to old, old clients who, um, you know, I'm checking in. Did you set up that biweekly? Are you on track to pay it off when you want to pay it off? Um, rates are low. So I'm giving some edu them some education on what we're seeing on our side. We're talking about, you know, rising values. Um, and I'm, I'm getting to understand with those older clients that I, I didn't do a good job at uh, maintaining that contact over the last couple of years. I'm restarting those conversations, just kind of a different approach of here's where we're at with the market. All right. Now, of course, people are wondering, well, what are you doing for the biweekly thing? Are you just showing them how to make extra payments or are you actually selling them into someone else's service? What does that look like? Yeah, so um, most of our loans do get sold. So we don't service a lot of our loans, although that is, we just rolled out a new product where we will be able to service our own. Um, <clears throat> so I'm giving them instructions because people love the idea. Um, if I'm gonna introduce the idea, I need to be able to you know, walk them through the, the, the steps of setting it up. So I've got an email template that I send out that basically just walks them through how to do it. I introduce the idea actually when we when I go to their signing and I try to go to 100% of my signings. So I introduce the idea then, then I set the expectation that I'm going to be following up within 30 to 45 days and then I give them more information. I can follow up with a phone call, I send them that email with the specific instructions. With the instructions, I'm also including that updated amortization schedule with that new payment added. So um, yeah, so it's people love it. I've had actually uh, financial or um, signing agents, and I've had title reps actually comment that they've never seen a, a mortgage planner in, introduced to that concept. A lot of them have never heard about it. So it's uh, yeah, it's getting some attention. And again, most importantly, I feel like I'm adding value to everybody. And if my realtor partners are in there, they they love the idea. And now some of them are actually introducing that idea if I'm not um, presenting it at the signing. So, yeah, I think it's, Love that. it's really Call Kate. All right, so a couple yeah. of questions. Of course, now you have people yeah. asking if you make the email template available to the group. Absolutely, yes, right. absolutely. I figured, you, I figured you would, yes. And then also, I mean, just walk through then how you're structuring all this. You're going to closings, you're making $30 a day. What is a typical yeah. day for life of like when you get in the office? Yeah, so um, like any mortgage planner or loan officer, um, your day can get, a, get out of control, right? You can let distractions interrupt you. You can let all sorts of stuff you know, derail you. But I'm very intentional with how I want my day to go. And I call block. This is a good, a good time for me to show you my win by new planner. But I'm call, call blocking. And I take every Sunday, um, every Sunday morning uh, with my husband, who's Super awesome. And it's a great podcast. So not just because yeah. Dave and I were both on it, but it is actually a great podcast. He's a, he's a yeah. tremendous interviewer. So um, look up Dan Trinidad on uh, iTunes or your favorite place like Stitcher. And I recommend it's totally worth your while. Yeah, absolutely. So it helps having a super supportive husband who has taught me a lot about um, just, you know, how to be effective and kind of how to manage my time a little bit better, how to be intentional with my time. And um, again, every Sunday we sit down and we go over, um, I reflect back on the previous week. I look at the upcoming week. I set my intentions for that next week. And I mean, this is what my planner looks like. And again, this is every single week on Sundays. I'm looking at everything that I did. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm like, gosh, I didn't do as much as I wanted to. Or boy, you know, I rated myself a two out of a five on a on productivity. You know, so it, again, I think reflection is a big thing. Is you know, if you're reflecting back, are you doing the activities that are going to get you to your goals? Um, and then again, a plug for one by noon. This holds me accountable to myself, right? So um, I can certainly have an accountability group. I love that Bliss, Bliss does that. I might. 
uh, throw that out there to see if anybody wants a, a partner. Uh, but this holds me accountable to me and my goals. And that's the part I love about this. And I can also, at the end of the day, go home and reflect back on, oh yeah, I talked to you know, eight of these clients and who do I need to follow up with tomorrow? So with my planner, I'm, I'm very intentional with my activities, what I'm doing, and I, at the end of the day, I'm just proud of the effort that I put into it. So yeah, and I love that. I mean, obviously, you know, anyone who's talking about planning and tr tracking, like that's my love language. So, um, so I appreciate that, but it, it, the, what I'm hearing and what you guys should all be, be noticing is that Katie's actually taking time, right? She used the word intentional. And so she's actually saying, hey, this is what I wanna do. And then she's looking and say, hey, did I actually do it? Because that, you know, we've all heard it before, success leaves clues and you've gotta really have that piece. Um, you know, the accountability piece, I'll throw out there a, a quick pitch. If you just go to WBN for win by noon, um, thinktank.com, that's where I'm holding people accountable. It's free for 30 days. So love to have a bunch of you in there. I'm actually going to run a face, uh, Facebook live in there on Thursday. So if you join by then, you'll see where we're going to specifically talk about people and how they're structuring their days. So, um, that'll be my quick, my quick plug, uh, for you. Uh, accountability from me, that's the place to get it. And, um, and so are you finding that any of these days that since Dave's been doing this challenge that you failed and, and that you have to get back on track. What is that? Or yes. are you just crushing the day? <laughs> yes, certainly. So for me, uh, 30 feels like a lot. Um, and, and it is a lot when I'm really trying to add this value and I'm, I'm putting a lot of effort and a lot of work into these, you know, updated amortization schedules. So it, it does, certainly does feel overwhelming at times. However, um, you can't give up. You can't give up and you just, the next day you pick up kind of where you left off and you come in every day and just remind yourself, this is, these are the activities that I have to do and that I really want to do because I'm going to serve these people and I, I have to do to get to wherever it is that I'm going. Um, and, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing my updated amortization schedules and I'm doing the biweekly um, value uh, proposition, if you want to call it that, I, I choose that I want to do five of those a day. In addition to those five, it's another 25 conversations with realtor partners and my existing pipeline, also new leads that are coming in. So it certainly is a variety of people that I'm talking to. Um, I know you and Bliss spoke about this earlier. I count a contact anytime I'm adding value to somebody. So if I'm reaching out to my existing pipeline, it may be, oh, how's everything going with my team? Um, here's where we're at. Here's what you can expect to happen next. That's adding value because they probably didn't know, you know, what's going on and, you know, whatever. So I do count that as a contact. Um, as long as I feel like when I hang up that phone, that person on the other end got some value out of that conversation. Same thing with my realtor partners. See, I love that. And everyone's got a different, you know, definition for that, right? I call that a quality conversation where you've actually got some item of value discussed between you and the other person on the phone, not, oh, I'm really busy. You call me back, click. Um, and so you all have to think through as you're hearing, right? You heard Bliss and Emmett now Katie talk about how they're tracking what they're doing to figure out what their results are. And I think that's the key, right? You said it, 30 is overwhelming as a number of calls. Um, but I'm finding that the people who are actually saying, hey, I'm gonna get it done are actually getting it done. I mean, what's that, when in the day are you currently doing that? And is it all at once? Or are you splitting yeah. up? What does it look like? Yeah, great question. So um, like Bliss, I'm effective in the morning. So I like to do it first thing in the morning. However, my mornings sometimes have other things. I've got a sales meeting, I've got a team meeting. So it is around those things um, that I'm, I'm call blocking. And that's the only way that I can do it is if it's blocked out on my calendar and I designate that time for, um, for those calls. So I'm doing it in the morning and then I'm also doing a couple in the afternoon just to kind of break it up. And Two, sometimes I need that lunch time to prepare for those additional conversations that I'm having in the afternoon. Um, again, I'm big on, on um, time blocking. So in addition to my database calls and my pipeline calls, I've got my realtor update calls that are happening twice a week. The rest of my activities get planned around that. So if I've got a lunch meeting, if I've got whatever, I keep my lunch hours open 
I also keep some time on Tuesdays open to meet with realtors. So it's, I'm really mindful about my time, controlling my time and not letting somebody else control my time. Another thing that I think is really helpful that kind of might, um, you might need to shift your thinking about this, but I really, really like to spend Thursday afternoon working from home. And the reason why I do that is because there's fewer distractions when, when I'm at home <laughs> most of the time, unless my little dogs are barking at every sound they hear. But I like to spend Thursday afternoons um, from home. I walk around the backyard. I have great conversations. I'm in my zone. I'm in, in my element. And I would encourage everybody to kind of think about that for themselves is, are you going to be, um, are you going to be better outside of the office? In my office, I love everybody that I work with. I can get easily distracted on a you know, conversation about the weekend or somebody's outfit or whatever. So I know that I've got to get out of the office in order to stay disciplined with my time. I love that. So let me point out a couple of things that Katie said that were genius, right? Number one is she schedules when she's going to call people, right? If it's on your calendar, guess what? It tends yeah. to get done. Most people say, oh, I'll just do it in the afternoon, but it's not like, hey, I'm going to do it from three to four or I'm going to do it from four to five. You've got to schedule it and then you got to write really be specific, right? Who it is that you're going to call. She also said, hey, I've got white space in there. I don't, I don't have everything blocked. So I actually have time to plan and think and do these other things. And then I loved it that you said you also have time scheduled to actually meet with your realtors. Again, schedule the time of when you want these things to happen. Schedule the afternoons you're going to have client meetings. Schedule the afternoons you're going to have realtor meetings. And then guess what? pick up the phone and call people and schedule the meetings to fill up the blanks that you put for yourself. Yeah. I tend to find that people who do that just end up crushing it. So, all right, we just have a couple of minutes left. I'm just watching here for any other questions. I had a couple of people ask about that accountability group. So I threw it up in the thing, wbnthinktank.com. It's free for 30 days. Jump in. If it sucks, quit. I don't, won't offend me. Um, but uh, ultimately you're going to have to turn in some accountability there, um, either live in the group or via email. Um, that's kind of fun. Um, any thoughts, Emmett, from you while you've been sitting there listening to Katie? No, I, I think it's a common theme is just having a structure to your day because just like you said, we get into this business for the control of your income, but you know, a structure is what leads to the greater income. And I, I can see it in my production year over year, uh, just implementing it, whatever system that you use is, is uh, win by noon. Um, using any kind of uh, technology that, that works for you. For me, I, my CRM, you know, it keeps me focused. It helps to replicate your time. I know uh, others have a team to help re replicate your time to focus on your income producing activities. You know, they call it our green time. You know, for me, I, I need to analyze, you know, on your loans closing, how did I meet that realtor? So I had to kind of like, well, I met her at an open house. Everybody says, oh, open houses, don't go to open houses. It still works. Everything works and nothing works. So like going to open houses and say, hey, how are you doing? Because they, you know, they're sitting there bored to death. You know, they, they remember you. And then I, just this month, I've gotten two, you know, two deals. Say, hey, hey, here you go. You, know, you just happened to show up. You know, they didn't have a, have a lender. So just because being top of mind. I mean, doing any kind of activity every single day. I mean, it, it really it adds up over time. So just do something. And then it's this 30 challenge, I, I think, is good that keeps us focused on uh, – focusing on those activities that produce our income at the end of the day. Well, and I appreciate that. So here we are as we kind of like white round down, wind down a call. Um, and hopefully I think we, I think we did what my desired end result was. My goal was to show you three different originators in three different parts of the country who are dialing 30 people a day. Um, they admitted they weren't perfect at it, but they gave you some, some insight into where they're, dialing, who they're dialing, what that looks like, how they're bouncing back when, when they're not just crushing it. Um, we've thrown out a few other resources. Um, certainly warm my heart that you three are all win by noon users. So thank you so much for being part of that community. Um, but most important, thank you for being part of this Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind community. The reason that they made the suggestion for the three guests we had is because you guys have all been posting up your results. So again, my call to action to all of you, regardless of whether it's a yellow pad of paper, a bunch of sticky notes, um, whatever you're using that you are uh, recording your activities, let's go ahead and get those posted in the group. Um, this is the 3010 challenge. It's about you. Yes, there are some great prizes, but as I pointed out, to me, it's okay that you're getting a paycheck. Um, certainly, um, this group is free and it's a great resource. If you want to jump in on the, the Win by New Think Tank, I would love to have you in there as well. I, I'm going to, like I said, on Thursday, go in there live to talk through um, these structures and how people are approaching it. Would love to have you along for um, that journey 
um, as well. And most importantly, um, besides our guests, I want to thank Dave, who's not here today. I always love the opportunity to come in here and, and be his guest host. But most importantly, I want to thank all of you. Um, we still have a large number of people here at the end of the call, which always tells me that you guys um, added huge value. So um, Bliss, who's already gone, um, Katie and Emmett, who are still here. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, everyone else. Um, thanks, Marcy, for running behind the scenes. And on behalf of Win by Noonan Mortgage Coach, I'm Todd Bookspan, and I am out of here. Thanks, Todd.